Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a zoo. If you have any suggestions on what I should make next, whether it is a cartoon build, video game build, movie build, or something from real life like the zoo, leave a comment down below letting me know what I should make next. I love reading your guys' suggestions, and as a matter of fact, that is why I made this zoo in the first place. Our zoo, whilst small, has a wonderful selection of animals. As we walk through the entrance, we have a ticket machine to the left and a bench to the right. Inside of the zoo, we have a farm section with chickens, horses, pigs, sheep, Cows, llamas, on this side of the zoo we also have an aviary, and a picnic area. Moving over onto the opposite side of the zoo, we have polar bears, wolves, camels featuring a fake cactus as there were casualties. Pandas, and lastly, on this side of the zoo, we also have some dolphins. This is the amount of space required to make the zoo. Here are some of the materials that we will use to build the zoo. And here are the rest of them. Begin by placing 26 brick blocks in a row on the ground. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. We then want to leave a gap of 3. So 1 two, three, and then we want to place another row of 26 bricks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. We then want to extend backwards by thirty. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Then all we simply have to do is extend all the way along the back of the grid and connect eventually when we line up to the very front of the grid. Like so. We also want to place two rows of oak leaves directly on top of our bricks. That is one layer of leaves.
And there we have two layers of leaves. Next we are going to head inside of our zoo and mark out the individual pens and enclosures. The first of which is going to start right here. So extending from this brick block in the ground dig a row of six. One, two, three, four, five, six, extending towards the center of the zoo. Then extend to the right by eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then dig back and connect to the wall. Continue digging to the right by eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then dig back and connect to the wall. And then once more, just dig all the way over to the right. We can fill all of this empty space in with bricks. Perfect. Moving on to the back of the zoo, we want to come all the way over to this corner and we want to find the sixth block in. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Digging right of this, we want to destroy a row of eight in the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then dig back and connect to the wall. Dig another row of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Dig back, connect to the wall. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Dig back and connect to the wall. Then fill all of this empty space in with bricks. This should match what we did on the front of the zoo. Now we are going to do something a little bit different. Coming back to the set of bricks that we have just placed, we want to leave a gap of five, one, two, three, four, five, and then we want to destroy the next grass block. And you can extend all the way to this back wall. We then want to continue digging right of the first grass block here that we just destroyed. We want to dig 16 rows to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Dig back and connect to the wall and also dig all the way over to the right. We then want to fill all of this empty space in using bricks. Like so. So from the sky, you will be able to tell that this is rather different. And the configuration of the animal pens that we have on the right is the same that we want to have on the front on this side. So if you come all the way to the entrance, from this brick block, you want to dig forwards by six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then left by 16, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Dig back to the wall and also all the way over to the side. Fill all of this empty space in with bricks. Next, we are going to add a few rows of bricks. We want to add a row of bricks here and here. We then want to add two rows of oak leaves on top of the bricks. We then want to fill in between these rows of bricks and leaves in using glass. You can have a row of two glass if you like, although you may find that you will need to add some barrier blocks or you can add, fill the glass all the way up to the top if you would like to avoid that. Regardless of what you choose, we want to do the exact same thing on the back wall here. So to match a row of bricks here and here and two rows of oak leaves on top of the bricks. Then we are going to place glass in between 
the rows of bricks and the oak leaves. On this side of the zoo, we will also have an aquatic section. The way that we place this is by coming to this brick here and counting and finding the seventh grass block in front of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Place a light grey concrete and extend that forwards by four. One, two, three, four. Extend left, forwards, and then left by 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Extend in, left, back by four. One, two, three, four. Right, back, right by 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then extend forwards. We are then going to remove all of the grass inside of this area. and replace it with sand. Another option is to remove an additional layer extending down to make the tank deeper, and then apply the sand, but you will also have to place light gray concrete underneath the ring. We are then going to place glass on top of the light gray concrete with a layer of glass pane on top of the glass. Then we are going to fill the centre of this in with water and we can stick with one layer of water or we can go for two. I'm just going to go for the one unless you do want to dig a little bit deeper down and then add more water that way. However, this should sit rather nicely in the centre of this part of the zoo. Next, let's add some detail to the individual enclosures, starting with the very first one that we made. So, the first thing that we actually have to do is kind of separate these a little bit better by placing two, one, two, stripped spruce woods, one, two, stripped spruce woods, in between the middle and the end enclosures, with a row of bricks extending back, and then two more stripped spruce woods at the back of the pens, like this. We can then add oak fence all the way around and in between the ends of the enclosures like this and that just helps us to better separate what we have just made. The next thing that we will do is add a row of spruce planks connecting the rows of stripped spruce together like this. The planks want to overextend one row like so. We want to add spruce slabs to the sides of the planks and then we want to extend the slabs upwards and inwards at the front overhanging row like this until they eventually hit a peak like so or we could go for something a little bit flatter. I think that that looks a little bit more barn-like so that is going to be my choice but you could have it either way. Let's add in the rows of planks first. And then let's add the spruce slabs. And then let's add lanterns here and here. That's looking pretty good. So not only do we want to do this on this side of the zoo, but we actually want to have an identical setup on this side as well. So we will add two strip spruce here, 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 and here, with bricks connecting front to back, and oak fence in between all of this, and extending round on top of the bricks, then we can add the rows of spruce planks that connect the front and the back together and overhang by one with spruce slabs extending off of the side of the planks like this and then we want to extend the planks inwards and upwards and I think that that's a good place to make the roof flat. I think it's the same as we have on that side as well. 
although yeah perfect so then all we have to do is extend the plank blocks backwards and then we can just fill in all of this empty space too Then if we just add a lantern here and here, that's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with how we have laid this out so far. We will deal with the specifics of the insides of these a little bit later on. So next we are going to make, and I'm hoping that this is the correct word, an aviary. So the way that we position this is by coming to this stripped spruce wood, counting inwards towards the center of the zoo and finding the sixth block. One, two, three, four, five, six. Destroy this block in the ground, place a spruce plank there, just as a point of reference, and then destroy six rows to the right, going that way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Destroy in one, right one, and then in by four. One, two, three, four. In, back, Left by six, one, two, three, four, five, six. In, left, forwards by four, one, two, three, four, and then in again. We can then fill all of this empty space in using spruce plank. We are then going to place three rows, one, two, three, of glass on top of all of the spruce planks. Why is that so satisfying to place it that way? And now I've made a mistake. That's less satisfying. Guys, we're back. Next, we are going to place spruce slabs on top of the glass. Then, we are going to place spruce slabs above and inside of the layer of spruce slabs that we have just placed. And we just have to remove that block there and turn it into a slab. And then later we would fill the entire top of this in with glass, but I'm just going to leave one empty so that we can get in there a little bit later on. But we also want to add a layer of spruce slabs around the top of the outside glass layer, just like this. That's perfect. Next, we are going to mark out the picnic slash ice cream purchasing and eating area. So the way that we do this is by coming to the corner of this pen and counting and finding the sixth block as we extend in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Destroy this block and the six behind it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Destroy across by four. One, two, three, four. And then remove all of the inside of this to form a rectangle. We then want to place a checkered pattern of polished diorite and polished deep slate. That's absolutely perfect. Next, we are going to complete all of the individual enclosures from beginning to end, starting in order. Our first enclosure is right here by the entrance and it happens to be the chicken enclosure. We are going to remove some of the grass blocks and replace them with hay. In some instances, we are going to remove some of the grass, place water in there instead, with a spruce slab or any slab on top and a horn coral fan instead to also look like a. We want to bury in the ground some composters and also fill those up with various plant life until we achieve this effect. We also want to remove some of the ground and place podzol instead like so, and when we have finally achieved the landscape that we're looking for, we can make the coop. So the coop wants to start here 
it is one, two, three rows in. We place one, two, three spruce slabs like this, and then we extend these slabs forwards. We then want to place spruce trap doors on the left and right sides of these slabs, like so. And then we want to surround the top of the coop partially with spruce trap doors. So on the left and right sides, at the very least, across the top as well, and also a spruce slab here, or rather spruce trap door here, oak trap door here. Now let's remove the inside of this. We can even place a horn coral fan if we like, or a couple in here. You could even place some cheeky eggs. But we want to also add a rail here and here, and then close the top of the coop. That's looking really good. And that will complete the chicken coop. Next, let's work on the stables. So first of all, we are going to remove some of the floor and we are going to replace it with hay bale. This is going to be a larger area than the chicken coop. We also want to remove part of the floor towards the left side of the build, maybe a two by three area like this. Add water, oak slabs, and then horn coral fence. This will act as a bed for the horse. We will then remove the remaining grass and replace it with oak planks. Then we can add a couple of cauldrons and a couple of composters and we can fill the composters up with hay until we achieve this effect. It just looks like food or feed and we can fill the cauldrons in with water. Feel free to add more detail to the stable than this, but I feel as though it'd be rather clean in comparison to the chicken coop, so I'm very happy to leave this as it is. Next, the pig pen. Begin by placing one, two, three light grey concrete extending inwards from this corner, and two across from the back, extend forwards by two, and then place stone stairs along each side like this, and then we want to add an additional light grey concrete just here at the back, and then just fill a row in just at the top of stone slabs, just to connect everything together. We're then going to remove the inside of this and place hay inside of this little pig. What, what would you even call this? A, a pig? Pig house? A pig glue? Anyway, we are going to build some cauldrons into the ground next to the pig glue and fill them with water. Along the side here, we will add a couple of composters and surround said composters with spruce trapdoors and then fill the inside of the composters up to give us this effect. I mean, if you wanted to, well, never mind, it's too late. You could have left them like half full to indicate that the pigs have been feasting. And then last but not least, we are going to remove some of the ground in here and a lot of the ground, to be honest, and replace it with pod soil because uh, you would imagine that in a pig pen, it is a, a little bit mucky to say the least. Pig pen complete. Moving over towards the back of the zoo now, the first enclosure we will make over here is the sheep enclosure. So to do that, we are going to place a row of one, two, three hay extending in the corner here. Add a row on top. Add a couple of bales here as well. We then want to place a row of one, two, three, four, five spruce trap doors extending across the back of the enclosure on top of the hay bales and then we want to extend them all two rows forwards and connect the corner down here using spruce fence then in the ground we are simply just going to dig a couple of rows place a cauldron in one composter in the other water in one and of course feed in the other perfect then we are going to bone meal this area sheep pen. Next, we have the secondary stable. This is going to look almost identical to the first, if not identical. First of all, let's remove some of the floor and place hay bales in there instead. We then want to remove another portion of the floor and place water in here instead with oak slabs on top and a horn coral fan on top of that. Then let's remove the rest of the floor and replace it with oak planks. And then all we have to do is add some food 
and some water. Perfect. So this secondary stable is suitable for, say, cows or donkeys, or maybe just more horses if you like. Next, we are going to make an alpaca enclosure, which is a little bit of a weird one. I want them to kind of have a hilly, sort of mountainous biome to live in inside of our zoo, but I do also kind of like think of them as farm animals, which is why they are in the farm animal section. So we are going to kind of like split the difference here. They are in the farm section of the zoo, but we are going to make them a little hill using grass block at the back of the enclosure, just like this, with some stone slabs just to kind of like reach a nice little peak. A stone slab here and there. Uh, maybe even like a little, we can give them a, a little stream. So maybe like if we just have this, and then maybe it can like curve around. For their water source and then if we build a couple of composters in the ground and then of course fill these in with hay just like this that's looking pretty good do we want to bone meal the area as well or are we happy to leave it at that i think that we will leave it like this Moving over to the opposite side of the zoo now, we will work on our first large enclosure. So this enclosure is meant for polar bears. First of all, we are going to remove, let's say, one, two, three, four blocks, make that five, from the front left side of the enclosure extending inwards, and then we kind of want to destroy a row inwards, a couple extending right, a row inwards, one extending right, and then like extend towards the back. And this area is going to be solid ground that the polar bears can wander around on. And we want to use white wool for this. White concrete powder kind of works as well, or you can use full-on snow. But white wool is going to be the effect that uh, won't melt, so we will just use white wool here. Then we want to remove the remaining area of grass, and do feel free to kind of like mess with the ratios a little bit. So do feel free to like make this a tad bigger if you want, so like if you wanted to give the polar bears a little bit more space. Once you've kind of figured out what is dry land and what is not, remove an additional layer down inside of the area that we have destroyed and replace the base of this with white wool. We are also just going to place bricks underneath here. Fill the lowered area in with water. Perfect. We have to make a cave for the bears, so we are going to place two stone extending up just by the corner here at the back, and then a row of one, two, three, black concrete powder extending right, then two rows of stone. We then want to extend the stone forwards, at least one row, it depends how big this area wants to be, at least one row, but you can make it two, and then stick stone stairs on top. Upside down stone stairs extending in. Stone slabs extending across the top of this. We we want a cave appearance like so. And then black concrete powder just at the back here so we can destroy these two. That's perfect. We want to destroy inside of this little mini cave. Fill this in with water. Add smooth quartz slabs and then a horn coral fan on top. Then we are going to... This is a little bit gruesome, but I'm using crimson... Haife? Never pronounced that word in my life. You can use Crimson Haife. This looks like meat, or alternatively, there is also the Neverwort block. So, like, I mean, they're, they're kind of like equivalent. So, either way, it kind of just looks like polar bear food. And we can have a couple of item frames. And inside item frames, there can be like bones or raw cod, something that polar bears would like. And once you've got all of that fleshed out, <laughs> get. <laughs> fleshed out because of the giant hunk of me anyway we will have completed the enclosure moving on down we are going to now make the wolf enclosure so let's add a mound of grass just at the back here like this let's make a little mini tree for the wolf so this is going to be a spruce tree that looks suspiciously like an oak tree we're not making it in kind of like the spruce style. Something like this looks really good. We also want to add a water source for the wolf as well. And let's replace the bottom of this with grass just so that it looks a little bit better. Bricks under here, that's perfect. And 
There we go, something like this. Just make it a little bit bigger. You can, of course, ta tailor this to your own liking. And then let's bone meal this area, just like so. So we have a nice little dark forest for the wolf to live in. Moving across the pond, <laughs> we are going to make our way to the smaller enclosure here. And we will, first of all, remove all of the grass and place a base of sand in here. Then we are going to build up a mound in the back using some more sand. And then we are going to add some cactuses. So this would be fit for camels or even alpacas. Maybe even some rabbits as well if you want to throw those in there. And well, any sort of other sandy creature could go in there. By the way, I don't know why I think of rabbits as sand creatures. That makes absolutely no sense at all. Next, we are going to make the panda enclosure. So this one's quite simple. We want to once again add a grass mound kind of along the back here. It wants to be quite large. It can kind of be about half or so of the enclosure, something like this. We also want to remove the front middle-ish of the enclosure, like so. And we want to make the base of this sand. And then add water into what we have just destroyed. Like this. Then we are going to add a couple of fake trees. So we're going to use jungle wood for this and jungle leaves. And we are going to make some very simple trees. Just one over here on the left and one all the way over here on the right. It doesn't really matter how these look particularly. As long as they resemble a tree enough, I think that that's all good. And then we are going to place some bamboo. So kind of whatever the opposite word of like the opposite meaning of sparingly is, we are going to plentifully add bamboo just around the enclosure. And then we are going to bone meal the entire area to make it nice and thick and luscious. And then we are going to grow the bamboo as well, although I'm pretty sure that that will kind of just grow by itself too. And you may want to add some barrier blocks above this just to limit the growth, but that's that's looking really good. I'm very happy with that. The pandas will be very pleased. By the way, I do also want to mention that the enclosures, I think, look better with a layer of glass removed. It, it, I was just kind of being lazy earlier, I think. I'm just going to barrier block the entire top of this. Just so that nothing can escape anyway. And we, we kind of have to do that to be careful, regardless. Because, I mean, th these mobs are so crafty, guys. You're gonna, you, we need to keep them in here. Next up, we are going to make the dolphin enclosure. So, first of all, we are just going to add a bunch of sea plants to the bottom of this giant tank. I'm going to recommend a bunch of different corals and all of the green sea plants that we have. So we're looking for every every color of coral and then seagrass, sea pickle, and kelp, just like this. That's looking good. It would seem as though that that brain coral that I've placed there is where we have to make the hoop that the dolphins are going to jump through. So we are just going to shift this one row to the left. And right in the middle of the tank, we will place a stone brick wall with an end rod on top and then a maybe two end rods on top of each other. Make them big. No. Well, that looks... Okay, we'll start with one end rod and then add yellow stained glass pane on top of this. Orange glass pane left and right. Yellow on top of the pane. Orange on top of the yellow pane. And then connect together in the middle like this. That's looking pretty good. And then we have a hoop for the dolphins to jump through, which they love doing. Next, we are going to work our way over to the aviary. This is where we will keep all of our birds. And in the middle of the aviary, we want to place an oak fence with a spruce slab on top of it. And spruce signs either side of the slab. Then in one of the corners, place an oak leaf like this in this formation and do the same in the opposing. We then want to place an azalea here and here. And in the ground, we are going to dig here and place a stone slab and here and place a stone slab. Item frame here and here with seeds in the item frames. Then we are going to place an open oak fence gate here and here 
and this is the Avery. This is absolutely perfect. Next, let's make the ice cream stand slash picnic area. Place two light blue concrete, one, two, and then extend across one, two, three, like this. We want to place flower pots on top of these two blocks with item frames on top of the rest with different shulker boxes in the item frames to represent flavors. We then place two end rods extending up here, one, two, and then a smooth quartz slab on top. And then we want to place some form of slab so that we are able to place beds in a ring around, there we go, around the top of our parasol. So we want to have something which should look like this. We then, did I say paracel? As in like, par paras like carousel, but with a paracel? It's parasol, right? Am I crazy? Can you imagine how much I would have to edit if I cut out all of the wrong words that I said throughout a video? In the corner of this area, we are going to place a brown glazed terracotta with a jungle leaf on top. We then want to place a 2x2 two two square of scaffolding like this, with a smooth quartz stair here and here, to give us this. Next, we are going to make some seating around the zoo by placing spruce stairs in a bench formation, just outside of the middle of this end of the aviary, and we will also place a bin in the form of a cauldron with a trapdoor on top. We'll do the exact same thing on the opposite end. We will find the three middle blocks of the aviary and place the spruce stairs like this to form a bench, and then a cauldron with an oak trapdoor on top. And we want to do the same thing all the way over here where we have the dolphin area. So, spruce stairs, gap, cauldron, oak trapdoor, Spruce stairs, gap, cauldron, oak trap door, just like this. There's not really anywhere else that we can place these, so I think that that will do for now. Next up, we are going to make the entrance of the zoo. So to begin, we will place one, two, three stripped dark oak wood left and right of the entrance. One, two, three, like this. We then want to kind of like connect these together side to side using a layer of green terracotta that also resembles two sort of like trees kind of like merging together, if that makes sense. But we also want to have a clear area in which we can place three banners right in the middle. So we'll end up with something like, like this, or maybe you can even like point them out a little bit more. I think that that is probably just fine. Actually, I guess it's nice and even if we do... Is that the same on both sides? There we go. That, that doesn't look too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. We also want to place a stone brick wall just right in the middle in between these two brick blocks. And all the way over here on the left side, leaving a gap of two, we want to place an upside down stone stair, light grey concrete on top with a one by one painting in front of that, item frame below with a paper inside of it. You can have one of these, multiples of these, it doesn't really matter, you can have one this side, one this side as well, or alternatively, all the way over on this side, you can have a bin, leave a gap of one, cauldron with an oak trap door on top, and then we can have a bench, so this can be made out of dark prismarine stairs. So it's, it's kind of like asymmetrical this way, which I like, but you could just have a bunch of ticket machines or some benches. They could line all the way up. It, it doesn't really matter. You can kind of just tailor this to how you like it, but I kind of like the asymmetrical nature of what we have just made. Well, anyway, once you figure that out, we have to write the word zoo in banners, which means we must make the dreaded sign. Throw down a loom, open it up, and place a green banner in there with some white dye. The first letter we must make is Z. This is the chief pattern, base, and then the bend sinister pattern. Next is O. So fresh banner, pale dexter, pale sinister, chief, and then base. So we don't have to make another O. Unless you do, if you're in survival, you may have to make another one. But in creative, we can utilize the O twice. Z, O, O. Perfect. That's our entrance complete. 
Our next task is a daunting one. We are first of all going to remove all of the grass block and grid that remains in front of the zoo. Make sure to destroy underneath the bins and also in between the entrance as well. Underneath the ticket machine. We are then going to fill in all of what we have just removed with smooth stone. That sentence sounded incredibly clunky, and I'm not 100% certain it makes sense, so let me give it another go. Replace all of what we have just destroyed with smooth stone. I swear, sometimes it's like I speak in riddles, it's crazy. Next, we are going to make a pathway that circulates around the entire zoo. We can actually start it off by destroying three rows directly up the middle of our zoo, pretty much cutting the entire zoo in half. We want to stop one row away from the wall. Then, we want to destroy three rows of grass in between all of the enclosures, kind of just extending all the way around our zoo. We never want the path to reach the bricks though, and we just want to extend it around the back of this bench for instance, and just in front of all of the enclosures. If we've made everything correctly, we should have a path that just loops around everything, but never really touches anything. We can continue this onto the opposite side of the zoo as well. Now all we have to do now that we are happy with our path shape is fill all of that empty space in with smooth stone. It doesn't really matter how you do this, I think that I'm going to just cut the area in half, kind of how we made it, and then fill each side in. Regardless of the method, I'm sure that the result will be the same. Once all of that has been filled in, we have completed our pathway network. Before we start adding the mobs to the enclosures, I would highly recommend securing them using barrier blocks. Slash give your name Minecraft colon barrier. Once you have this block, you can apply it to the tops of the walls in the case of the more farmy part of the zoo.
If you want to be super safe, you can build it very high, as I am doing here. That should be safe enough. I would recommend taking extra care with the enclosures that have raised mountainous areas in them. If you want to be like 100% certain nothing will escape, you can add the barriers to the top. And of course, let's not forget our voluntary ice cream stand worker. May also try to escape unless we help him by, by staying where he belongs. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to add all of the animals into the zoo. I would highly recommend name tagging each and every one of them if you don't want them to despawn, which will require an anvil and a name tag. I would also recommend actually name tagging them with the actual name of the animal, but if you're a little bit lazy, like I'm about to, a full stop will do just fine. So, first of all, we have the chickens. Then we have the horse. And the pigs. And the sheep. And the cow. We have our alpacas slash llamas. We have our polar bears. Well, hopefully, I'm sure he'll pull through, but just in case. Moving on quickly. We have our wolves, our camels. This is going to be dangerous in here for you, my friends. We have our pandas. Our dolphins. Yeah, I, I had feared that would happen. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Okay, an alternate to the actual cactus, by the way, is a green block. If you'll... A green block with... Why are you making this so difficult? With birch buttons surrounding the green block, and then it kind of still looks like cactus, but it's not cactus. So, you know, it's it's up to you whether you want to make that substitute. You may keep your camels alive for longer. We also have our parrots as well. We'll name most of them. Also got to remember to seal up the top of this. And last but not least, our volunteer ice cream stand worker. Guys, we, we, we have seemingly made an error with the Avery as we have a parrot flying around. I, I just can't have a parrot flying around Mini City. It would literally drive me insane. With all of the animals added, we have officially completed this tutorial. However, this video is not over. We must now add our zoo into our city. Come on. It's an absolute travesty that we don't have the perfect spot already picked out for the zoo. I desperately wanted to put this downtown, like in the middle of the city, but there is just nowhere to fit this. We really are going to have to reformat the city and we I, I might just have to take like an entire day just rebuilding the city in such a way that we, we just have better locations for the bigger and better builds that are coming up in the future because it's a little bit sad that we don't have a good place to put this. So for now, it's, it's just going to go on the edge of the city near Ikea where the water park is. It's kind of like in the fun zone of the city so it is at least with the other fun builds if nowhere else. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you are looking for more things to make by me, check out the Mini City Builds playlist down below in the description for everything that you can have and will not see on the screen right now. We have city builds, video game builds, movie builds, cartoon builds, you name it, we have it. Check the playlist down below.
Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.